Previously we said that the adrenergic agonists are divided to three main groups according to their mechanism of action, direct acting, indirect acting and mixed action adrenergic agonists. And in the previous two lectures we discussed the first type of them, the direct acting adrenergic agonists. They were about 15 different agents that we discussed their actions, uses, adverse effects and brand names. Today we'll discuss the indirect acting and mixed action agents. Don't worry about writing down, you'll find the lecture's PDF down in the description. Let's start. As we said before, the indirect acting adrenergic agonists cause the release, inhibit the reuptake, or inhibit the degradation of epinephrine or norepinephrine. They potentiate the effects of epinephrine or norepinephrine produced endogenously, but do not have a direct effect on the postsynaptic receptors. Amphetamine, the first thing you should know about it that it has a strong stimulant effect on the CNS, and it is highly addictive drug. Amphetamine acts by releasing intracellular stores of catecholamines, such as norepinephrine and dopamine. It also inhibits mal, and is a weak reuptake transport inhibitor. So, high levels of catecholamines are readily released into synaptic spaces, leading to a marked CNS stimulation and an increase in blood pressure and heart stimulation. Its therapeutic use is limited due to psychological and physiological dependence. But it is used in certain conditions such as, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or known as ADHD, which is a condition in some young children, characterized by hyperkinetic and lack the ability to be involved in any activity for longer than a few minutes. It is also used in narcolepsy which is a relatively rare sleep disorder that is characterized by uncontrollable bouts of sleepiness during the day. And also used in appetite suppression. More information about amphetamine and its derivatives will be discussed in the CNS lectures. Tyramine, is another agent that enhances the release of catecholamines from nerve terminals, increasing their concentration in synapse and potentiating their effects. Actually it is not a clinically useful drug but it is important because it is found in fermented food, such as aged cheese and Chianti wine. It is a normal byproduct of tyrosine metabolism. Normally, it is oxidized by mao in the gastrointestinal tract. But, it can precipitate serious vasopressor episodes in patients receiving mao inhibitors. Cocaine, is a widely available and highly addictive drug. It acts by blocking the reuptake of the catecholamines into the presynaptic terminals, thus increasing the amount of catecholamines available at the synapse. And this potentiates and prolongs the CNS and peripheral actions of these catecholamines. The prolongation of dopaminergic effects in the brain's pleasure system which is called the limbic system, produces the intense euphoria that cocaine initially causes. But chronic intake of cocaine depletes dopamine and that triggers craving for cocaine that temporarily relieves severe depression. More information will be discussed in the CNS lectures. Now let's talk about the last type of the adrenergic agonists, the mixed action adrenergic agonists. They both act by enhancing the release of stored norepinephrine from nerve endings, and also directly stimulate both alpha and beta receptors, such as, ephedrine and pseudoephedrine. They are not catecholamines and are poor substrates for Compt and Mal, so they have a long duration of action. They are absorbed orally and they penetrate into the CNS, but pseudoephedrine has fewer CNS effects. Ephedrine is eliminated largely unchanged in urine, and pseudoephedrine undergoes incomplete hepatic metabolism before elimination in urine. Ephedrine produces a mild CNS stimulation. It also raises systolic and diastolic blood pressures by vasoconstriction and cardiac stimulation. It also produces bronchodilation, but it is less potent and slower acting than epinephrine or isoproterenol. So it can be used to prevent asthma attacks. It can also be used as oral nasal decongestant. Pseudoephedrine is primarily used orally to treat nasal and sinus congestion but it has been illegally used to produce methamphetamine. So products containing pseudoephedrine have certain restrictions. That's all for this video, 
If that was useful for you please leave like or comment. In the upcoming lecture we'll start talking about the adrenergic antagonists, so subscribe if it's your first time here, and keep following us.